Namaste. I'm Laura Lynn, and welcome back. This is week seven of our college course at Lake Tahoe Community College, spring quarter 2020. And now we're just over halfway. Congratulations. Uh, today, I'd like to start with just a short little discussion on the Yoga Sutras. I know we've dug into when they were written about 2,500 years ago. We've talked about who Master Patanjali is, the author of the sutras. He was a doctor and a dancer and a grammarian. And he codified these teachings of yoga that had been previously before not collected. Uh, so we're very grateful for his work. And he put the teachings of yoga into this small book. There's about 190 short little phrases in this book, depending on the translation, and there's thousands of translations in every single language imaginable. But how does it start? How does this book start? We've talked about our eight limbs. Uh, we've talked a little bit about the philosophy, but what, 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 how does this book start? Well, the very first sutra in the Yoga Sutras is the introduction to the teachings. And it is Atta Yoga Anushasanam. See, a very short phrase. A, a sutra is like a little stitch in a tapestry. Just one short little phrase. Atta Yoga Anushasanam. Now begins the teachings of yoga. Now, Patanjali started with this very first thing, as was traditional with texts back in the ancient days. And it's a, it's a call to attention. It's also saying, hey, your teacher is about to say something important. Pay attention. Come to. Be present. Now begins the teachings of yoga. Now, the second sutra in this book is yogash chitta vritti nirodaha. Yogash chitta vritti nirodaha. It defines yoga. So we say, now we're going to talk about yoga. What is yoga? Yoga is the stilling of the fluctuations of the mind. That's what Sutra 2 says. The calming of the consciousness. You know, here in Lake Tahoe, we have this beautiful, beautiful body of water, right? And when it's windy or stormy out, the water gets all churned up. It gets very murky. The sand gets ripples in the bottom. There's waves crashing about, right? Can you, can you see any kind of reflection on the surface when the water's all churned up? No. Can you see down to the bottom of the lake or bottom of the sand near the shore when the water's all churned up? Can you see that beauty? No. If we can still our mind, the way that the lake stills after a storm, the waves settle, the water clears and calms and becomes still, then all the beauty around the lake, right, the mountains, the clouds, right, all that's reflected. And you can see clear through to the bottom, right? You can see the beautiful stones and, and rocks and sand on the bottom of the lake. When our mind is stirred up, and we're thinking about a million things and a half at once, and we're here and we're there in our head. They call it the monkey mind, because ah, it's everywhere, right? You can't see clearly, you can't think clearly, and you sure can't reflect all the beauty around you, right? You're kind of caught in your own muck, right? In your own storm. When we can calm the mind through the practice of asana, your physical poses, through the practice of the moralities, the observances, through the practice of pranayama, the breath work, through the practice of meditation and concentration, we can still the mind. We can quiet those waves. We can calm that storm. And then we can see our own true beauty and we can reflect all the beauty around us. You become a holy person, a place of refuge for others. And that's also very powerful. 
So yoga means union, but the practice of yoga stills the fluctuations of the mind. It calms the storm inside. All right, so let's get started with our physical practice, the asana, which is your third limb that Patanjali talks about in the Yoga Sutras. So come on to your mat right now, get your things together, come on to your mat, and we'll begin the practice. So taking a little cushion underneath your seat, uh, a blanket, bring your right chin in first and take your left to the outside for Svastikasan, auspicious pose. Catch hold of your knees, straighten your arms, turn the eyes of your elbows up. Turn the inner arms to the outer arms. Bring the triceps up and the biceps down. Now squeeze your shoulder blades together. Down low, the lowest part of your shoulder blades. Broaden the upper part of your shoulder blades. Let the tops of the shoulders release away from the ears. Let the sides of the neck feel long. Look straight ahead. Soften your gaze. Start to withdraw your senses. Now bring your palms together, lining up the fingers, and then turn the base of the thumbs to the sternum chest. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths, settling into this moment, settling into your practice of calming and stilling your mind. Notice where you feel the breath moving. Is it up high in your chest? Or is it a little deeper, perhaps, into the rib cage? Well, invite it in if it's not down into the rib cage yet. Invite that breath in and let the lower ribs expand first. And then as the inhale continues, it kind of climbs up the rib cage, the middle ribs expand, the upper ribs expand, the collarbones spread. There's a pause at the top of your inhale. And as you exhale, the breath moves out from the top to the base. Now as you empty the breath out, this time, draw your belly in and up, engaging your core, engaging Uriana Bandha, a seal, a bind, a lock right there at your belly. And then lift at your pelvic floor as well, engaging Mula Bandha, also another lock, a seal that helps you direct your energies. Let your next few breaths that move in be strongly into the rib cage, keeping those two lower energy locks firmly engaged. And now we will chant three ohms. Om is the primordial sound of the universe. Master Patanjali says in the Yoga Sutras that it is as close to the sound of God that we can come as humans. So if the sound of Om is not one that you enjoy, you can use the word Amen, or you can just make any sound that is comfortable and meaningful to you. We'll do them all together and we'll do three. Exhale to begin. Keeping those energy locks engaged. Inhale and fill the rib cage, fill the lungs. As you surrender the intelligence of your head to the intelligence of your heart. And we honor those who've gone before us, Sage Patanjali, Sri BKS Iyengar, and all our gurus. We bow to our greatest teacher, 
the divinity and the purity that resides within. Now placing a, a gentle little smile on your face, take a full breath in and a full breath out as the hands float down to the thighs with the palms facing up and the fingers relaxed. As you inhale, smoothly bring your chin up to center. And then as you exhale, sweetly and softly, allow your eyes to open. Now keep your gaze relaxed and soft and contemplative and come to standing on your mat. Move your blanket to one side. And then come up to the short side of your mat for circling the winds vinyasa. This is a nice, easy flow to get the body warmed up for the standing poses that will be introduced later. So start with your feet hips distance wide. Allow yourself a little space and grace there between your big toes and your heels. And then reach your arms down next to your sides. Work on getting those shoulders away from the ears. Level your gaze. Soften your jaw. Soften your cheeks. And soften your forehead. Now draw in and up at your core, Mula Bandha. Draw in and up at your belly, Oriana Bandha. And inhaling, press down into your feet to lift your arms above your head. Let your gaze travel up to the thumbs. As you exhale, reach as far forward as you can. Keep your core firm and flow down to your feet. Tuck your chin into your chest just for a moment. Bring your hands to your shins. Roll the shoulders back. Look forwards and up past your eyebrows. Exhale, bring your fingertips to the mat. Step back with your right foot. And then step back with your left into Adho Mukha Svanasana, Downward Facing Dog. Flatten the palms and push back into the thighs. Your feet are hips distance wide. Your arms are straight. Your legs are straight. Your spine is straight. Now breathe forward as you inhale onto your knees. As you exhale, untuck your toes. Round your spine and press your hips back to your heels. You'll feel a nice stretch through the sides of your body and your lower back. Now look to the front of your mat. Inhale, slide yourself forward until your shoulders are over your fingertips. And then bending the elbows straight back, slowly lower down. We want the elbows to stay in nice and close as we lower down. Now pressing your palms down into the floor. Inhale, lift your chest. Pull back with the arms. Pull back with the toes. Inhaling and exhaling one more round. Squeeze those lower shoulder blades together. And then exhale, head to the mat. Inhale, firm core, come up to all fours. Exhale, roll the hips back to the heels once more. Inhale and come forward into tabletop pose and then gaze up for a little back bend. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips, press back through the heels and take five deep breaths right here in Adho Mukha Svanasana. If this is a little much, come down to your knees, take your knees a little wide, and give yourself Adho Mukha Virasana, Downward Facing Heroes Pose. Wherever you're at, you should be just about at five breaths. So look to the front of your mat, and on your next inhale, step yourself to your hands, or you can take a little hop, come up on those tippy toes. Hands to your shins as you take a half lift. Lower shoulder blades together, collarbones spread. Exhale, bow back down, tuck chin into chest. 
inhale and rise all the way up reach those arms forward come all the way up bring the palms together exhale to sternum chest in namaskar asana and then hands to your sides let's take that again inhale sweep the arms up breathe it in exhale breathe it out inhale half lift breathe it in exhale plant hands step back right foot step back left foot exhale Adho Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, come forward onto your knees. Exhale, untuck your toes. Press your hips back to your heels. Now keep those toenails pressing down as you come forward back to all fours. Shoulders over your fingertips. And then exhale and lower down with control. Inhale and lift your chest. Pull back with the arms, pull back with the toes, tuck your buttocks towards your heels. You should feel your belly move away from the mat. Exhale and bring the forehead to the mat. Inhale, come up to all fours. Use those bandhas. Exhale, hips to heels once more. Inhale, flow forward, arch between the shoulder blades and gaze up. Tuck your toes under, exhale, and press back to downward facing dog. Now when you're holding downward facing dog, it's perfectly acceptable, even recommended, to just step your feet a little bit wider and turn the heels out just a bit. We want the flesh of those inner thighs to spread and roll back. The weight in this pose should be primarily in the legs and the feet. Take your final breath right here. And then walk your feet back in line with your hips. And even in a little bit, bend the knees. Use your bandhas. Look to where you want those feet to land. And inhale. Float forward or step forward. Bring your hands to your shins. Gaze up, arch spine. Exhale, bow back down. Lift those hamstrings a little bit higher. Inhale and sweep the arms up to the sky. Gaze up, palms together, exhale, sternum, chest, hands to your sides. Good work. Now, find your yoga blocks. This is a good time. Take a little drink of water. Find your yoga blocks and bring them to your mat. This next asana, remember asana means uh, seat or position you place your body in. This next asana is called Trikunasana, triangle pose. Start with your big toes together in Tadasana, arms down next to your sides. Firm your thighs, draw those two lower bandhas in and up. Squeeze your lower shoulder blades together, broaden your upper shoulder blades. Turn your inner arms to your outer arms. Take a breath. Engage all the muscles of your body. Just firm them to the bone. And now bend your knees and bend your elbows so that your fingertips are touching just above your sternum chest. Inhale, step or hop your feet wide and extend your arms. You never want to hop if your ankles, your knees, your hips, your lower back are a little tender, sensitive, or modified, all right? So always step apart and step back together if those are conditions that you're dealing with right now. Now turn your right foot out, turn your left foot in for Parsva Hasta Padasana, side hand foot pose. Front heel is in line with the back arch of your feet, pelvis and sternum are facing forward, front of the chest lifts. Bring your left hand to your hip, take a deep breath in, and then as you exhale, using this left thigh, push it back, push down into the outer left heel, and use that left leg to anchor your pose. As you reach over to the right, take hold of the block and bring it to the outside of your ankle. Now, this right shoulder, rather than letting it drop in like this, 
roll the inner arm to the outer arm, the, bice, the tricep to the bicep, and plug that shoulder into its socket. Now your top hand is on your hip. Bend that elbow back to help rotate the rib cage forward again. The sides of the torso are long. The back foot is pressing firmly down into the mat, especially that outer heel. The front knee is lifting up into your hip. Now reach your left arm up, stretch the arms away from each other, reach to the crown of your head, and then turn to look up. This pose strengthens the sides of your neck. You may feel a little tension right there. If you do, turn to look down. Now prepare to come out of your pose. Use that top arm to rise up. Inhale, pull yourself up. Now keep your left leg firm. Keep pressing down into that back heel. Bend your front knee, and here you are in Virabhadrasana 2, Warrior 2 pose. That front shin, straight up and down. Keep the knee tracking over the little toe. Your shoulders right over your hips. Reach the arms away from each other. Now, reach for the crown of your head. Turn your head and look at your longest finger on your right hand. Channel a little warrior, warrior energy and use your bandhas to maintain this position. Position comfortably held, right? Good. Inhale, straighten your front leg and turn the feet to face forward once more. Bring your hands to your hips for a moment. Good. Moving to side B. You can take the block that is on the right side and just move it back a bit. And then take a look at your feet and make sure that they're in line with each other. So if your foundation is off from the beginning, it's gonna be very hard to move into the pose with any kind of integrity and balance, right? So take a look at your feet. The inner arches are in line with each other. The toes are in line with each other. The front of the body is lifting. Those quadriceps are lifting. Now reach your arms back out, firm the muscles to the bone. Turn your left foot out 90 degrees. Angle your back foot in about 30 for Parsva Hasta Padasana. Bring your back hand to your hip. So we move into Tree Kunasana Triangle Pose. Feel the breath move up the front of the body, firming the right leg, pressing into the outer right heel, anchoring from that outer right heel. Stretch the left fingers as far away from that right heel as you can. And then hand to the brick. Take the brick to the outside of your front ankle. The left shoulder rolls back. The inner arm rolls to the outer arm. Keep the integrity in that shoulder socket. Now lift your top arm. Stretch the arms away from each other. Keep working on your back leg. Push the right thigh back. Press into the outer right heel. Stretch the sides of the ribs forward towards the end of your mat. Take one more breath right here. And preparing to come back up now, inhale. Use that top arm to come up. Bend your front knee, Virabhadrasana 2. You feel the strength you're building in your legs? Keep working with Mula Bandha. Keep working with Uriana Bandha. Insist on maintaining those locks. Look over your longest finger on your left hand. Keep that lunge strong. Your left knee tracking right over your left foot. Don't let that knee turn in. Take two more breaths right here. Challenge yourself. Dive into the breath. Work with your mind. Inhale, straighten your front leg. Turn your feet to face forward. Bend your elbows, bring your hands to the top of your head. Bend your knees. Inhale, step or hop everything back to Tadasana. Good work. Move your blocks off of the mat for now. And we're going to revisit a pose that we haven't done in the last couple weeks called Vimanasana. Uh, roughly translated as airplane pose. It's a precursor pose to a number of other poses that we do. I want you to learn the action here of turning your trunk. Watch me and then we'll do. So coming to Tadasana, bring those big toes together. Bend your knees and bend your elbows. 
using your bundas if you're gonna hop you'll hop a lot higher use your bundas if you step you'll step a lot smoother inhale and step or hop your feet wide take a peek down at your feet make sure they're in line with each other good now turning the trunk we're going to turn to the right so turning your right foot to face the short side of the mat turn your left foot rotate the trunk until your sternum bone is facing the short side of your mat press firmly into your back heel lift both knees now turn your palms to face up lift your arms above your head beautiful firm legs tighten the knees use your bandhas take one more breath now turn the palms to face away and extend the arms back out to your sides turn to face the long side of your mat again. Let's move into side B. Make sure your feet are in line with each other before you proceed. Turn your left foot out, turn your right foot in, and rotate the torso so it is facing the short side of your mat in the other direction. Firm the thighs, use your bundas. Turn your palms to face up, inhale, and lift the arms. Let the lift of the arms lift the rib cage for you. Deep breath, one more inhale, and exhale, palms face away, extend the arms back out to your side, rotate to face the long side of your mat, bend your elbows, bend your knees, step or hop, everything back to Tadasana. Nice work. Give yourself a little shake out now, maybe do a lap around your mat. And are you noticing that more you concentrate on your practice, on your breath, on your bandhas, on your poses, the less you're thinking about that stuff outside there in the world, right? You're coming into your practice. You're working on training your mind using the tool of your body and your breath. It's where it begins. You're doing great. Now, find your blocks again and place them at the back of your mat, just like we did for triangle pose. Stand in front of the blocks and now watch me. This is Parvrita Trikunasana. This is whoo, a new pose. Parvrita means revolved, to twist or to turn. Trikunasana, you already know, means triangle or angle pose. So Parvrita Trikunasana is revolved triangle pose. It brings uh, a challenge with it in the balancing and the twisting. But if you use your bandhas, you'll maintain your balance. And if you keep your breath moving smooth and deep in this pose, you'll keep that calmness of mind. Watch me. You've already been here. Just like we did in Vimanasana, rotating the torso, to face the short side of the mat. Now, bringing the, le the back hand to the hip, I'm going to reach forward with my arm. I'm going to take a hold of the block. I'm going to place the block on the inside of my front leg ankle. And then, with my hand on my hip, I'm gonna pull that hip back and start to turn my torso towards the long side of the mat. To come out of the pose, we look down and then firming the core, rising back up. That is Parvita Trikunasana. Now, let's do. Placing your blocks, standing in front like you are, Bend your elbows, bend your knees. Inhale, step or hop your feet wide. Turn to the right, turn the right foot out, turn the left foot in for Vimanasana. Now, bring your right hand to your hip, reach forward with your left arm, start to pivot at the hip. As you draw that right hip back, reach for your block, place your block, on the inside of your front ankle. And then twist to the right, drawing that right hip back, keeping the legs firm, 
and using your bundas. Two or three breaths here, long in the spine, deep with the breath, engaging your core. Let's prepare to rise up. Inhale and rise up. Good work. Move your block back behind you and let's go to side B. Again, extending the arms and taking the intermediary pose, Vimanasana. Turn your left foot out 90 degrees. Turn your right foot around about 60. Hips are facing the short side of your mat once more. Bring your left hand to your hip. Reach your right arm forward. Reach as far forward as you can as you're drawing that left hip back. Then find your brick and place it on the inside of your ankle. Turning the torso, finding the parvrita in this trikonasana right here. Twist, bend your left elbow back a little bit more. Reach to the crown of your head. Use your bandhas. Two more breaths. Feel all four points of your feet pressing down. And then let's rise up. Inhale and rise back up. Move your block out of the way. Bend your elbows, bend your knees. Zip or hop your feet back together. It's a challenging pose. We'll be doing that more over the next few weeks. Give your body a little bit of a shake out. And again, if you'd like to take a little drink of water, do that right now. Coming to our next pose. There's a lot to get done this week. Ardha Chandrasana Half Moon Pose. Now we worked on this a couple times last week. This is essentially a one-legged balancing triangle pose. So I'm just going to remind you of what it looks like. We take it through Trikonasana to Ardha Chandrasana. Here comes Ardha Chandrasana. The front knee bends. The back heel lifts. You're just watching, right? You're not doing, you're just watching. Shuffle step in, carry your block with you, place it to the outside and in front of your little toe. And then lift your back leg and straighten your back leg first, then straighten your bottom leg and start to turn the torso, reach the top arm up. Stretch the limbs away from each other. Can you see the triangle pose in Ardha Chandrasana. Here we go. I'm going to come back and then rise back up. You ready to do? Let's do. Coming to your mat in Tadasana. You know, a mountain pose is like home base. When you were a kid, you'd be playing tag in the evenings, right? You'd be like, home base, I'm safe, right? You know? Tadasana is kind of your home base and your asana practice, uh, at least for the standing portion of it. So coming back to home base, to Tadasana, bend your elbows, bend your knees, use your bandhas, inhale, step or hop, legs wide, arms wide. Now, turning your right foot out 90 degrees, turn your left foot in about 30. Keep the pelvis facing forward, torso facing forward. We're visiting triangle pose first. Exhale and reach the right arm over. Take the brick to the outside of the ankle. Bend your left elbow back a bit more to turn the rib cage. Now let's play Ardha Chandrasana. Bend your front knee. Sh lift your back heel. Shuffle step in. Carry the brick with you. Lift the back leg. Feel your back leg straight and firm. Then straighten your right leg. Start to turn the pelvis, turn the torso to face forward once more. And then you can lift that top arm. Breathing here and smiling. Take your top hand to your hip, bend your supporting leg and step back. Don't give up until you have triangle. Inhale and rise back up. Move that block out of the way. Turn the feet to face forward. Take your hands to your hips and just take a few smooth, deep recovery breaths. 
hopefully you're getting a little more focused in your mind. The more you're challenged physically, the less you're able to think about distracting things. You've got to be here, present in your body. Take a full breath in right now. Take a full breath out. Soften your gaze and relax your jaw. And let's have some more fun. Turn your left foot out 90 degrees. Angle your right foot in about 30. And again, the hips face forward, torso faces forward. Reach your left arm out. Isn't this fun? Reach your left arm out. Take a huge breath up the front of the body. Use your bundas. Exhale over and take your hand to the brick. The brick to the outside of the ankle. Turning the torso, using the bend of that right elbow to accomplish it. Now, Ardha Chandrasana, your one-legged balancing triangle pose. Bend your front knee, lift your back heel. Shuffle step in, carry the block with you, and then lift the back leg. Straightening the back leg first, and then the left leg. Turn the pelvis to face forward. Turn the sternum bone to face forward. Keep breathing deep. Keep your breath moving. Smile. Take one more inhale. And then top hand back to the hip. Bend the supporting leg and step back to triangle pose. Reach the top arm up and let that help you come back up. Now notice how your feet landed. Uh, just for your own educational purposes. See how you did placing that back foot down. The more you practice, the better it will become. Turn the feet to face forward. Bring your hands to your hips. Heel toe your feet in so that they are just a little bit wider than hips distance. And now reach your arms above your head. Just sweep them wide, nice and big and wide. Bend your elbows and catch hold of your elbows. This is Baddha Hasta in Tadasana. Moving into Baddha Hasta in Uttanasana, which is your forward extension pose. Firm your feet down onto the mat. Lift your inner ankles, lift your inner knees. Use Mula Bandha, use Uddiyana Bandha. Lift your sternum bone, gaze up just for a breath, and then exhale. Take all that beautiful length forwards and down. And you're here for about five or six breaths. So let the shoulders release, let the arms relax as much as they can. Keep lifting the hamstrings and pressing your feet down into the mat. Relax your neck and notice if there's any tension in your jaw or in your cheeks. And here, nobody's looking, so you can give your face a good stretch. Open your mouth wide, stretch your eyes, stretch your cheeks, and then relax your face. Two more breaths. Let Make them count. <laughs> and now let the arms just dangle down to the mat. Take your hands to your hips, and please take a little bend in your knees to come back up to standing. Whew. Good work. Good news, we're doing a new seated pose next. Taking your, you're going to need your blanket and you're going to need uh, both of your blocks. And if you have a bolster in your life, you can, have, you can use a bolster as well. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate it with the blocks and with the blanket. This is Virasana Hero's Pose. To set up for this, and I'm going to take a side view for you. Take your blanket and place your blanket on your mat. With the fringe side facing away from you. This is one of the only times we'll ever do that. The fringe side is facing uh, away from you. The nice creased edge is facing you. Now, you're going to take your block and place it right on the edge of that blanket, okay? So you have your blanket, creased edge, and your block. Now you might need two blocks depending on your knees and depending on your hips and your, uh, your foot flexibility, really. So you may want two, but we'll just kind of see how it goes because you can always add one later. Now, just watch me and then we'll do. 
Coming into this pose, I come down to all fours. I bring my knees together. My knees are snuggled together, tight, 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 like they're glued together. My feet are hanging off the edge of the blanket, a little bit of space and comfort for my ankles, and my inner ankles are hugging this block. The block is right there at my inner ankles. It's not at my shins. It's not between my knees. It's not up high. It's right between my inner ankles. Now, forehead, I'm going to bring the crown of my head to the floor. Watch, taking my hands right into the back of my knees. I'm going to pull the flesh of my calf muscles back. I'm going to start rolling them out to the side. So I reach my hips back and come to sit on the block. Now, my hands are pleasantly wedged between my calf muscles and my hamstrings. I'm going to pull my hands out to the left and the right to keep those calf muscles rolling out. Now, hands to the thighs and the chest lifts. This is Virasana Hero's Pose. Very noble. Opens the chest. Now let's do. Come down to your mat. I'll do it right along with you here. Set your block. Set your blanket. Make sure you've got it how you want it. And then come to all fours and bring your knees together. Keep your knees on the blanket. If you need to walk the block back, walk the block back. But keep your knees on the blanket. Don't let your knees hang over the blanket. Snuggle the knees together. And then take the brick to right between your inner ankles. Right between your inner ankles. Squeeze that block with the inner ankles. And push down into the tops of your feet. Now bring the crown of your head to the mat. It's nice to hold a little bit of weight there at the crown of your head. Lift the hips high. Catch hold of the backs of your knees. And then stretch that calf muscle back. Roll it out to the sides. You slowly come up to sit up onto that brick. Slide your hands out. Now here's where you'll notice, oh, my knees don't kind of close up quite that much at this stage in the game. Take your other block, lift your hips, and bring it on top. And then, I bet you it becomes a lot more comfortable for you. Especially if you have uh, sensitive knees or modified knees, take more height underneath your hips. Lift the chest, straighten your arms, look straight ahead, and wherever you're at, call it beautiful, and take a few more breaths. Soft eyes, deep breath, press down into both shins and the tops of both feet, lift your sternum chest. Squeeze your bottom shoulder blades together. Broaden your upper shoulder blades. Upper shoulder blades should match the width of your collarbones. Lower shoulder blades digging in and driving up. Take one more breath. And then release your pose. Lift your hips up off of the blocks. Move the blocks to one side. And then just walk yourself back off the blanket. So just come back to all fours. And then take your knees wide. Slide your big toes together. Roll up your blanket into a happy little sausage shape here. And then bringing the hips back to the heels for Adho Mukha Virasana, downward facing hero's pose. Slide the blanket to underneath the forehead. Reach your arms over the blanket and press your palms down. I'm going to open up the arms, give you a nice stretch to the sides of your waist, through the sides of your ribs, and through the armpits, upper arms. Fill the body with breath. If this is a little challenging on the knees, remember from our earlier classes, you can always just tuck a blanket back in behind there. And if that's the case, Set yourself up something like this. Use both blocks underneath your forehead, and then you can bring the arms and let them rest on that block instead. Now, there's always a way to do your asana. There's always a way for you to do your yoga. Always, always. Breathing deep. Let your face relax. Find some softness in the back of your neck. Find some softness. In your forehead, find some softness in your heart. Slowly walk yourself up now. 
If you have a blanket behind your shins, move it out of the way. Move your blocks out of the way. Move your blanket out of the way. Come to all fours for Adho Mukha Svanasan, Downward Facing Dog. Hand position, when the hands are holding weight, should be slightly out to the left and the right. The hands just turn out just a little bit, and then the weight comes underneath the index finger and underneath the thumb. It's very important uh, if you love your wrists, you know, and you want to take care of those little bones in the outer edges of your hands, take that weight to the inner edges of your hands as practicing ahimsa, your first yama, being nonviolent to your hands. Now turn the eyes of the elbows to face each other and then rotate them to face the front of your mat. Squeeze the lower shoulder blades together. Broaden your upper shoulder blades. Draw your belly in using Mula Bandha, Uriana Bandha. These arms should feel very strong. Now tuck your toes under. And without disturbing what you have built with these arms, lift your hips, straighten your legs best you can, and reach those heels back and down. Now take a peek at your elbows. Turn the elbows to face, the eyes of the elbows to face each other. Just a bit more now. Push away with the arms. Press back into the thighs. Lift your knees. And breathe here. Working to get those heels down to the mat. Try lifting your toes. Uh, that might wake up the back of your calves a bit more. And then bring the toes back down. Head is relaxed. Breath is deep, kneecaps are lifting, weight is shifting back. You're almost there. Take one more breath. And come back to child's pose now. Knees wide, big toes together, Adho Mukha, Virasan. Roll the hips back. This time, reach your arms back next to your sides. Let the shoulders relax. Let the shoulder blades spread and round. You can take the blanket to underneath your forehead or use your blocks. You're here for about five or six breaths. In the sutras, Master Patanjali says, Shtira uh, Sukham Asanam. It's a short little phrase, right? Shtira Sukham Asanam. It means your asana, your physical practice, is a perfect balance of strength and softness, or steadiness, firmness, and sweetness. Yeah, so let some sweetness come into this pose, into this moment right here. Let yourself be soft. Be feeling the waters of your soul start to quiet and still and settle. Maybe you can feel a gentle calmness starting to move into your body as your brain relaxes in a sweet way and your breath deepens in a delicious way. Now pressing your hands down into the mat or bring your arms back next to your sides, next to your shoulders and slowly walk yourself up. Bring your knees in. If you used a prop underneath your head, move it out of the way. And find your blocks. We have one more standing pose. It is upward facing dog. So you just did downward facing dog. Well, now we're going to do upward facing dog. Take your blocks and place them on your mat. Not like where you normally place your hands on the mat, you know, just about shoulder distance wide. Then take the end of your mat, the side of your mat. See, I have kind of an extra part here, and you're going to flip it over, okay? And then that kind of locks those bricks in there, those blocks in there, so they won't slide on you, all right? So we're, watch then, now, watch me. We call this, uh, uh, well, we usually call this come see asana, but obviously you can't come see. We're not in a studio, so uh, use your eyes asana, hmm? okay? I'm going to start in a, a downward facing dog, and I'm going to move into upward facing dog, or Dva Mukha Watch me, and then we'll do. So 
I place my hands on the mat, and they're slightly turned out, the fingers are spread, the weight is on the inner edges. Tucking my toes under, using my bundas, lifting my hips, and I'm pressing back into my thighs. So here we are in upward facing dog, downward facing dog rather. Feet are hips distance wide. Now I'm gonna come forward. And this, uh, this happens a lot in vinyasa classes, so it's very good to learn now. You're gonna come forward into a plank position. For this first one, we're gonna keep our toes tucked under. Look at my toes. And I'm gonna roll my shoulders back, lift my sternum chest and gaze up. You know that space underneath my thighs? So I exhale, I'm gonna pull back and come back into downward facing dog and then back down to my knees. All right, let's do together. Take your hands to the blocks, spread the fingers wide and turn the hands slightly out. Well, sometimes you can kind of use a little heel of your hand on the edge of that block to give it just a little bit more support. Inner arms to outer arms, walk your knees back, tuck your toes under, and let's have this adventure. Inhale, lift your hips, exhale, and press back into your thighs. Just take a breath or two here, find your equilibrium, find your balance, and find your breath. Firm your core. Mula Bandha, Uriyana Bandha, and let's shift forward into Urdhva Mukha Svanasana. Inhale, come forward, shoulders over fingertips. Lift the chest, roll the shoulder blades back. Squeeze the lower shoulder blades together, broaden the upper shoulder blades. Gaze up, keep those legs firm, use your bandhas. Exhale back, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog and then back to your knees. Keep your hands right where they're at. Take child's pose, Adho Mukha Virasana. Let the head rest on the mat. A few breaths right here. Inhale and come back up for round two. The difference with round two, when we go into upward facing dog, watch my feet now. So we're going to come onto the tops of the feet rather than keeping the toes tucked under. If that's a little much, keep your toes tucked under, all right? We have plenty of time to advance the pose. But watch here, this is toes untucked. Coming forward, rolling over the toes, lifting the chest, squeezing my inner ankles together. We don't want the feet to fall open. Squeezing the inner ankles together. And then pulling back with the toes, and pressing back to downward facing dog. All right, let's do. Last standing pose right here. Such a beautiful one. Opens the chest, opens the heart. It's exhilarating. Come to all fours, set your hands intelligently, tuck your toes under, and with your bun disengaged, lift your hips and press back into the thighs for Adho Mukha Svanasana. Concentrate on your bandhas. Inhale and come forward, shoulders over fingertips. Now untuck your toes, keep the thighs firm, roll the shoulders back, squeeze those inner shoulder blades and draw them up to underneath the sternum bone. Gaze up, take one more breath and then pull back with the toes or step the feet back under and come to downward facing dog. Come to your knees and take child's pose, Adho Mukha Virasana, any way you would like. If you wanna give those arms a break, bring the hands down next to your sides. Take a few breaths into your back ribs, into your hips. Keep a pleasant, but relaxed expression on your face, training your face. If your hands are back near your ankles, bring them forward to underneath your shoulders and then just roll yourself slowly back up. Whew, so much fun. Flip your mat back, move the blocks to one side and find your blanket. Place your blanket on your mat, underneath your hips, 
and straighten your legs. When you sit on your blanket for Paschimottanasana here, Western stretch, you want to sit on the creased edge of the blanket, just a, a little uh, yoga prop refinement here. You want to sit on the creased edge of the blanket and have the fringe facing away so you have a nice, even, supportive surface for your hips. Find your strap. And we're ready to go for Western stretch. Why do we call it Western stretch? Pashi means Western. Why do we call it Pashimottanasana or Western stretch? The back side of our body is the Western side. The front side of our body is considered the Eastern side. When yoga was developed in the East, uh, practitioners, yogis, yogins, non-gender specific yogins, would do their sun salutations, their Surya Namaskaras, facing the sun in the morning, and that would, the sun would shine on the east part of their body. So we're gonna stretch the west part of our body here as our practice draws to a close. Bring your hands next to your hips, fingertips face forward, lift the chest. We're working with those shoulder blades a lot today. Bring those inner shoulder blades together, broaden the upper shoulder blades, or the lower shoulder blades together, broaden the upper shoulder blades. Roll the butt, triceps to the biceps. Loop the muscles around the arms, lift your chest. Firm thighs, press down with the upper thighs, press down with the knees, press down with your shins, inhale and lift your arms above your head. Use your core, use your bundas and the firmness of those thighs to hold your torso upright. Exhale, pivot right at the hips and catch hold of the shins or catch hold of the feet. If you can't get to your feet, then I recommend using your strap. So take your strap. I will demonstrate with the strap. Now inhale, concave spine, look up, roll the inner arms to the outer arms, plug those lower shoulder blades in, gaze up, keep the legs firm. Full pose, bend the elbows out to the side. Draw the torso forward, the crown of the head forwards, and then gently come down. Keep the elbows lifted and drawing back. If you're binding onto your feet, maybe you can catch hold of your left wrist and keep the elbows bending. This is another uh, bind that you can do. Use those two lower bandhas and just slightly relax your glutes so you can come forward a bit more. Two more breaths. Slow, deep breaths. Inhale, Urdhva Mukha, look up. Exhale, release your pose back to Dandasan. Good work. This next pose is a new one. It's a new seated pose for you, and it's called Uhita Janu Shirshasana, uh, or Janu Shirshasana for short. Uh, janu uh, means knee, and uh, Shirshasa means head. So it's kind of knee to head pose. Let's see how it goes. You're going to start by bending your right leg. So catch hold with, these are your two piece fingers, your first two fingers. Catch hold of the back of your right knee and draw that knee up. Take your right hand to the outside of the knee and let the leg open up. You're sitting right on the edge of your blanket. Now, take your right heel or your uh, right big toe to the inside of your left thigh. So ball of the foot. Heel can come to it or big toe can come to it. The right knee is moving down and away. And here's where we start to feel this little bit of a twist in this pose. We're going to extend forward over our left leg. We're going to shift our torso, shift our side waist over to come forward over this front thigh. Find your strap. Everyone use a strap for this first one. Take the strap to the ball of your foot. Lift your chest, squeeze your shoulder blades together, and then shift the torso. We're just gonna work with the torso shift right here. Lift the chest and gaze up. Take a few breaths here. Feel your sideways shifting over. Feel your rib cage shifting over to the left. Keep gazing up, pull on the strap. Keep your left heel on the mat. Press your right knee down and away. Exhale and release your pose. Move your strap uh, just aside for a moment. We'll be using it again. 
Take your first two-piece fingers again. Catch on to the back of the left knee. Lift the left knee. Bring your left hand to the outside of the knee and let it open up to the side. Bring your feet together and take Baddha Konasana. Press the thighs down to lift the chest. Reach the sternum chest up. Spread your collarbones. Two more breaths right here. Or you push down with the thighs. The more you stretch from the inner groins to the outer groins, the more you push your feet together, the higher you can lift your chest, the more delicious the pose. Breathe deep. Keep the waters still. Keep them calming. One more breath. Exhale and release your pose. Catch hold of the outside of the knees and help the knees come back together. Straighten your right leg. Let this left knee come open once more. It's nice to give it that knee a little bit of support with your left hand. And then slide the big toe into the inner uh, right thigh or the heel or both. Whatever you can get in there. The left knee presses down and away. So that left knee presses down and away. Kind of feel the shift start already. Take hold of your strap. Place it on the ball of your right foot. Straight arm, straight spine, straight right leg. Push the upper thigh down, push the shin down. Inhale, squeeze those lower shoulder blades together, lift them up. Gaze up, Urdhva Mukha, it's an intermediary pose in most poses. We look up, we rise up to ground down, says Mr. Iyengar. Now shift your torso over to the right, shift your sideways, learn that action. Shift the ribs, shift the sideways, press the left knee down and away. Take one more breath. Feel your body. Keep both sit bones equally weighted. Don't let that left hip get light. And exhale, release your pose. Set your strap to one side. First two fingers, catch hold of the back of that right knee. Let the right knee open up to the side and then slide your feet together. If the heels don't come in very close to the, uh, to the uh, pelvis, no big deal. Bring them further away. Uh, we don't want to suffer in our practice. You want to stretch. You want to feel sensations. You want to be strengthening and making progress physically, mentally, spiritually, and intellectually. Uh, but, uh, but you don't want to be suffering, right? Or, or one, you won't come back and keep doing this. And we need you to do this. Your yoga is going to save this world. So we need you to have fun and be enjoying this. Final breath here. Press the thighs down. Lift the chest. Help the knees come back together and straighten the left leg. Let the right knee open up once more, getting the hang of that action. Slide your right foot into the inner left thigh. Find your strap again. And this time, we're going to do Janu Shasana again. And we're going to come forward over the thigh. Catch hold or lasso your foot, the ball of the foot not the arch of the foot. We don't want to pull in the arch of the foot. Be on the ball of the foot. Straight arms, lift the chest, plug the shoulders in, squeeze those lower shoulder blades together, broaden the upper shoulder blades. Now take a look at your left foot. Line up your sternum bone with the foot. Shift your side waist over, shift your rib cage over. Press your right knee down and away. Now gaze up for Urdhva Mukha. And exhale, bend the elbows out to the side, just like you did in Paschimottanasana, and come forwards and down over your left thigh. Keep pressing that right knee down and away. Reach through your left heel. The toes are drawing back towards the knee. Elbows lift and draw back. Deep breath. One more. Inhale and rise up, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale and release the strap. Help your right knee back up and straighten the leg. Bend your left leg. Help that knee come down with your left hand. Slide the foot, the big toe, the heel into the inner thigh. The left knee now presses down and away and you start to feel that little shift, right? That twist. Catch hold of your right foot with the strap, straighten your arms, lift your chest. Now pay attention to your hips. We want both sit bones equally weighted on this blanket. Roll the shoulders back, squeeze those inner shoulder blades together, broaden the upper shoulder blades, broaden your collarbones. Gaze up, Urdhva Mukha, and then shift the side waist over to the right, the ribs over to the right. 
exhale, fold forward over your right thigh. Again, those elbows stay bent and lifted. Pull with the strap. Reach through your right heel. Press your left knee down and away. Keep shifting the torso, working that head to the knee. Deep breath. One more. You're almost there. Inhale and come up. Use those bandhas. Exhale and release your pose. Good. Straight. Help your uh, left leg back up. Straighten your legs. Paschimottanasana, uh, symmetrical forward extension pose after all that asymmetrical work. If you need to use your strap or you'd like to use your strap, place your strap on the balls of your feet. If you're not working with your strap, maybe this time, because you can reach your feet, you can wrap your fingers, your first two feet, piece fingers and the tip of your thumb around your big toes. It's just another bind. Inhale and gaze up. Concave spine, squeeze those low, lower shoulder blades together. Like, ah, and then drive them up underneath the sternum bone. Broaden the upper shoulder blades. Firm your belly, use your bundas. Exhale and come forwards and down. Again, the elbows lift and draw back to keep the collarbones spreading. The crown of the head reaches towards the feet. The sternum bone reaches towards the thighs. Slow your breath down. You're here for about five more breaths. Use them wisely. Inhale and rise up, Urdhva Mukha. Exhale, back to Dandasana. And release your pose. Inversions are very important for our body. If you think about it on a day-to-day -day basis, you stand, you walk around, you sit down, and then you lie down. When do you ever turn upside down unless it's to like tie your shoes, right? When we turn our bodies upside down, it's extremely beneficial uh, on so many different levels. It releases the effect of gravity on your internal organs for a little bit and moves everything back up to where it should be. It's a nice release on your heart. It clears the fluids out of your legs, you know, if you tend to get puffy ankles. It's got to be turning upside down a little more. Oxygenate your brain. Many, many more benefits. So today's inversion is Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, or bridge pose. It's the safest one for us to do uh, when you're relatively unsupervised like you are in this video, okay? Uh, when we reconvene, Back in class, we can work on a full shoulder stand. We can work on uh, headstand preparation. But for now, for safety's sake, we love our bodies. We want to keep them in good shape. Let's stick with the inversion we do in Setu Bandha Sarvangasana, bridge pose. So you need one of your blocks. Come off your blanket and place your blanket at the back of your mat so it's handy for your Shavasana. And then turning so that your feet are facing the front of your mat on the short side. Catch hold of the backs of your thighs. We're going to lower down really slow. We're going to sneak just this little bit of ab work in, okay? So press your feet down, tuck your tailbone under, draw the belly in, use Mula Bandha, yeah, and roll yourself down onto your sacrum. Now I want you to just stay right here on your sacrum. Squeeze the shoulder blades together, keep the collarbones broad. Draw the belly in. Now lower down until just your side waist which is the space between your pelvis and your lower ribs is on the mat. Now release your arms. Look up at the ceiling. Press your feet down. Pull that belly in. Take one more breath. And now roll yourself down the rest of the way. Feel those abs kind of wake up a little bit? Good. <laughs> now find your block. Have your block handy. Uh, those of you who have practiced with me for a while, no, not to turn your heads. Those of you who are just tuning in or you need a gentle reminder, here it is. Don't turn your head. Once these hips are lifted and the block is under your sacrum, this neck becomes rather vulnerable. And we don't want to strain our neck. That's so not what we're here for. And be on the back of your head and looking straight up at the ceiling or the sky, wherever you're practicing. Okay? So when the hips are on the floor, it's safe to turn the head. When the hips are lifted, resist the temptation to turn your head, okay? Block is handy, 
so you don't have to turn your head to find it. Let's begin. Walk your heels in close to your hips and feeling, bringing your intelligence to your feet. Like bring your mind to your feet. Feel those feet spread and make sure that your toes are facing forward. Now reach your arms down next to your sides and turn your palms to face up. So the triceps roll to the biceps. The biceps roll under. You feel the lower shoulder blades squeeze together. Can you still keep those upper shoulder blades broad? Belly draws in, bund is engaged. Uh, in this pose, we actually engage our throat lock here at Jalandhara Bandha. So Muna Bandha, Oriana Bandha, and Jalandhara Bandha are engaged. Makes this pose extremely powerful. All right, here we go. Press down into your feet without turning your head. Lift your sacrum. Lift your side waist. Lift your hips. Roll onto the outer edges of your shoulders. Tuck those shoulders under. Now, reach for your block without turning your head. Take the block at either level one or level two. If you have a wood or a cork block, you can go up to level three. But if you're working on a foam block, stay at level one or level two. This is, uh, don't look. Uh, I'm on level two, but don't turn your head, right? <laughs> turn, turn your palms to face up at your sides again and snuggle those shoulders under a bit more. Those lower shoulder blades firmly engaged. Belly's drawing in. Now, without turning your head, you're going to lift your legs one at a time. If you are a female and you are on your cycle right now, please just keep your feet on the floor. That's a much more appropriate pose for you at this time. It's just how it is, all right? You can also keep your feet on the floor if you Oh, uh, want to be on your cycle, or uh, you just want a little more of a restorative pose. Keep your feet on the floor, okay? <laughs> I'm not discriminating in any way. All right, if you'd like to lift your legs, let's do it very slowly and mindfully with bundas engaged. Lift your right heel up off of the mat. Lift your right foot up off of the mat and draw the knee in close to the torso, and then straighten the leg up, 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 up. Tighten the knee. You can point the toes or flex the foot, whatever feels best on your leg, wherever you need the stretch. And then float your left heel up, your left toes up, bring the knee in close and straighten that leg. And take a look up at your feet, spread your toes. And sometimes it's fun to just imagine you're holding someone that you love up on the pedestal of your feet. It helps you stay here a little bit longer if you're doing it with a beautiful intention like that, you know. With love in your heart, lift your sternum bone and start to bring the sternum bone a little closer to your chin to engage Jalandhara Bandha. But keep the back of your head on the mat. So don't tuck your chin into your chest. Bring your chest to your chin, your sternum bone to your chin. Open up through the backs of the knees. Move your breath deep into your body. Keep your face soft and relaxed. We stay in inversions, obviously. This is an inversion, right? We stay in inversions just a little bit longer than the rest of the pose. Poses that we do. Mula Bandha, Uriana Bandha, Jalandhara Bandha. Just a few more breaths. If at any time you need to come down, well, this is your yoga. Come on down. All right, coming out of this pose now, bend your right leg and bring your right foot back down to the mat. And then bend your left leg and bring your left foot down to the mat. Stay here for a few breaths, even close your eyes. And just enjoy how your body feels. You press down into your feet and you send those knees forward little more of a stretch in the front of the hips and the psoas area. Gives it a little more extension. Now press down into your feet to lift your hips up off of the block. Squeeze your inner thighs towards each other. Don't let the knees splay out. Slide the block out of the way without turning your head. And then bring your hands to your upper glutes and stretch as you roll down vertebrae by vertebrae. And then once the hips are back on the mat, you can turn your head. Hi. 
Bring your knees into your chest and give yourself a little hug. Rock side to side and make little circles around that area that the block was just a moment ago. Change the direction of the circle. Come to center with the knees. You're going to take a huge breath in, a full breath out, and then bring your forehead towards your knees or as close as you can get it. Bring your knees towards your forehead. Just round your body. And then bring your head back to the mat and bring your feet back to the mat. Reach your arms wide to the sides. In a T-shape, we're going to take a little twist. Cross your right leg over your left and snuggle those thighs together. Shift your hips a few inches to the right. And then just let gravity work on those thighs. Just let them roll over to the left. Lift your head. Turn your head to the right. Set it back down. Deep, smooth breath, winding down and moving towards your Shavasana. With your next breath in, draw the knees back up and the head back up. Uncross the legs, shift your hips back in line with your spine. And then cross your left leg over your right. Nice and tight, snuggle those inner thighs together. Shift your hips a few inches to the left, and then let your knees softly and sweetly roll down to the right. Lift your head, turn your head, and look towards your left hand. Press the left shoulder blade down. Relax the legs and the hips. Oh, feel how good this feels. And now to rise back up, inhale, firm core. Come all the way back up. Uncross your legs. Bring your feet in line, your feet, hips and feet back in line with your spine. And you have reached Shavasana. Straighten your legs. Take your blanket and tuck it underneath your head and your neck. If having your legs straight it's kind of uncomfortable or a little tight in the lower back. I, I know how that feels. You can bend your knees. Take your feet wide to the sides of the mat, like I am. And then just let the knees rest on each other. I'm going to tuck the buttocks towards the heels so that the lower back flattens and smooths out. And then turn your palms to face up. Flatten the shoulder blades, even the lower shoulder blades. And let the collarbones spread and relax and match that width. If you have your strap handy, you can always use your strap as a little bit of a, like an eye pillow, just to kind of uh, blindfold, uh, just to kind of block out the light a little bit and allow your senses to withdraw. Or let the little muscles around your eyes relax now. Let the outer corners of them broaden and the inner corners drift away from the bridge of the nose. The space between the eyebrows softens, widens, and the flesh underneath the eyebrows smooths out and relaxes. Can you bring your awareness to your temples? Let them draw inward, softening, the way a wave returns back to the ocean, just draw them in. Let the hinge of the jaw soften. And take that softness down into the sides of the neck and into the throat. Soften your throat and into your tongue. Relax your tongue. Let the tongue be soft and full and plump inside your mouth, a little bit of space between the teeth. You're signaling to your mind that there's nothing to say, nothing to taste, there's nothing to see, just relax. Softening your nostrils will help the breath move with a little more grace and ease. And relaxing the little muscles around the ears and the inner ears. 
will help calm and soothe your senses as well. Feeling your skin, your arms, your legs, your torso. Take a slow, deep breath right now. Hold it in just for a moment. And then as you exhale, either through the lips or through the nostrils, let the skin relax. Let it fall away from the muscle. Penetrating even deeper, see if you can allow the muscle, your arms and your legs and your torso, to fall away from the bone. Go one layer deeper. And if you are craving to go even deeper, even closer to your soul, imagine your bones and imagine the very marrow in your bones softening, relaxing, and dissolving into pure light, into pure energy, into prana. You are a being of light and energy. Feel that now. Maybe you feel like you're floating or drifting. Or maybe you feel snuggled in and heavy and grounded. Maybe you feel both at the same time. Wherever you're at, take one more slow, deep breath filling from the base of your lungs to the top of your lungs. Pause at the top of that inhalation. And then smoothly and slowly and naturally exhale. Notice the pause at the base of the exhale. Do that one more time. Your breath, move it into your body. Swirl it down into the lower lungs and then the middle lungs and then the upper lungs. Oh, hold it in at the top just, just for a heartbeat or two. And then a natural smooth exhale. Notice the pause. And then let your body breathe with its own intelligence for the next few minutes. Stay present. Let the mind settle. Let your inner lake calm.
slowly now begin to deepen your breath once more. As you allow your breath to draw you back to your body, feel the energy of your breath streaming out to your fingers and your toes. When you feel it get there, bring a little motion back to your fingers and your toes. Brush your thumbs across your fingertips. Wiggle your toes. Roll your wrists and your ankles around in little circles, one direction and then the other. Turn your head side to side. Then sweep the arms above the head. Take that big, giant, delicious stretch. Sigh it out. Now bend your knees one at a time. Shift your hips a few inches to the left and roll completely over onto your right side. And snuggle up with yourself here. Bend your knees, tuck them into your chest. Use your upper arm as a pillow. Close your eyes and breathe. Notice how you feel. Calmer. Does the turbulence in the mind seem a little less significant? You feel a little happier? Well, no effort along this path is ever lost. This is a cumulative practice. Isn't that good news? So wherever you're at, Slowly and sweetly and lovingly, start to walk yourself up to seated. Use the strength of your arms and keep your head heavy so it's the last thing that rises up. And then come to a seated position. Bring your palms together and take the thumbs to the sternum chest. Close your eyes and we'll dedicate our practice. This dedication is where we practice the fifth niyama of our eight-limbed path, uh, Ishvara Pranidhana. This is where we surrender the fruits of our efforts to something greater than ourselves. Ishvara is the highest name for the divine energy in this universe. And so we send our practice to that beautiful energy, to that place where love and light are gathered and we ask for our practice to be used for the best and highest good for all beings everywhere. The littlest little creatures that crawl around on the earth to the largest, most beautiful creatures in the oceans and the skies. May all beings everywhere be happy and healthy and safe and at peace. Picture this world. And together with me, let's offer one ohm, that beautiful vibration. Let it fill your body and let it feel good. Exhale to begin, one ohm. Inhale. Float the backs of your hands to your thighs, palms face up. Inhaling and draw your chin up to center. Keep your chest well lifted and bright. Exhale and smiling, open your beautiful eyes. Well, thank you for joining me here today and thank you for being my teachers from the light in me, I honor the light in you. Namaste.